Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Zara of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video, as you can see from the title, is going to be part two of my testimony series. And this one is going to be on a more touchy subject. I don't have any tissue, so hopefully I don't cry. Um, but it's going to be on my experience with being raped as well as molested. Um, and it's it's not a pretty thing like at all and it's crazy how it has it has happened in my life um yeah so i'm just gonna get into this and try not to cry and um the reason why i did okay so if you haven't seen part one already which is my overview slash my testimony on depression check that out you can click the on the screen but um i started off with the depression one just because the depression one really leads into all the other ones that i have to share with you guys and it's kind of hard to give you all of the details of my depression if I don't share the other parts of my testimony so that's why I did that so this one will still have bits and pieces of depression for me but um if you want to get the full logistics of um, logistics the full overview of me being um getting through depression and stuff like that then check out part one but this is part two and so I'm being raped and molested so I have experienced both twice and um I've also put been put in a situation where I was almost getting raped um, and I'm going to explain all of that to you guys in this video and try not to break down because um, I'm over them, but you know, it still hurts. It's still a question of why, but um, I realize that we go through things not for ourselves, but to be able to minister to others, to testify to others. And um, I've come to accept certain things and, you know, I will say I don't condone rape obviously i don't condone molestation obviously um and anyone who has gone through it if you're still struggling with it get help i didn't get help um i kept my experiences to myself which is why i was in depression for so long because i chose not to get help and i could have gotten help but the few people that um i did try to confide in which i probably shouldn't try tried to have confided in friends but um the few people that i did try to confide in didn't believe me and then I was also threatened and whatnot so we'll get into all of that so um molestation is where it started for me um and I don't like to call it molestation but when I googled up the, the you know the word molestation and let's google it um because it's it's hard for me to say molestation because I don't feel that it is molestation but um it says let me let me look up the Merriam Webster's dictionary version, not the Google translation. So, um molest is to annoy, disturb, or persecute, especially with hostile intent or injurious effect, to make annoying sexual advances to, to force physical and usually sexual contact on. So that is the definition of molest molestation. So I have experienced that twice um with family members. And then I've been raped by guys that I trusted, but, you know, yeah. So, I'm um, starting off with molestation. I got molested by a relative, and I'm not going to say what relative because I'm still trying to come to terms with it. I'm still trying to deal with it because I do still um, go around this relative and, um, you know, I'm okay with this relative. I have gotten an apology from this relative. I'm not sure if it was an apology for what happened in the past, but he did apologize. Um, you know, and I don't want to ask, you know, when you apologize to me, was it for this? Because I just took it as an overall apology to what he did back then. But, um, yeah, so basically, this was around the time, I think prior to um, the whole R. Kelly peeing on a girl situation um I, i'm gonna say fourth fifth grade because that's what my mind really remembers being in the fourth or fifth grade um i used to go over to family members house a lot because that's where we went to me and my brother went after school um because they were watching us and i had a relative there that one night i'll never forget this one night we were me and my brother was sleeping on the floor on a mattress and um my relative was sleeping on the bed and i don't know what transpired i think we were watching anime at this time um you know like dragon ball z or something like that and um when i say this is like in the 90s or early 2000s i mean like way back then um but for some reason 
I apologize. Um, my son is sick. He's running a fever, so I have to check on him when he calls me. But, um, yeah, so I don't know what it was, like I was saying, but one night, um, he pulled out his penis um, and asked me to touch it. And as a kid, I don't, you know, I didn't know what it was. I felt wrong, but I didn't feel wrong. Like, I was curious because I didn't know what it was. Um, obviously, I was very naive at the time, but um, I didn't know what it was, so I did. And then he tried to take it a little bit further with me um, jacking him off, giving him a hand job basically, and then he tried to get me to kiss it. And I can distinctly remember that because I was looking at him like, what? No, I didn't want to do it because it, I didn't know what I was doing one and it felt wrong already doing what I was doing. But I did it because, you know, this was a relative that I trusted in. I didn't know anything about sex or anything at the time. So, um, yeah, he just, he really tried to get me to kiss it and put it in my mouth, but I just, I didn't feel comfortable with doing that. So, um, after that, it was just like, okay, whatever. And I went to sleep, he went to sleep and, you know, nothing really changed with our relationship because that was someone that I loved and trusted and that was family to me. But, um, it wasn't until I got a little bit older into, you know, sixth grade and seventh grade that I realized what had happened. And, um, I couldn't really tell anybody. And I definitely couldn't tell my mother because this was on her side of the family. So I didn't want her to know, um, because my mother's crazy. <laughs> um, my mother goes to bed for her kids, like, for real. She will fight you for her kids. And I didn't want to tell her what had happened. So I kept it to myself, thinking that it would be okay to keep to myself, but obviously that kind of spurred me out of control when I got into middle school and found out what it was. Um, so I've dealt with that, kept that hidden, and I just, I was still around this relative, but it felt very difficult to be around them, and especially because this relative was very um, open with sex and his sexuality. He was very open with it. Not that he was gay or anything, he was just really open about it even to this day he's just very open about it and it still puts me in an awkward position um but yeah i just you know i stopped wanting to go around that relative a lot more as i got older because i came to the realization that i wasn't comfortable um and then fast forward to eighth ninth grade i was on a debate team and i talked about this in my depression video um there was a guy in my school that was you know cool and handsome and all that he was affiliated with gangs. He did sell, I think he sold drugs. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think he sold drugs. But he was affiliated with a gang. And um, back then, I'm not going to lie, I was attracted to guys that were in gangs and really thuggish. That was what I was attracted to. Um, I don't know why, honestly. It just was a thing for me back then. Now when I look at them, I just be like, what? Like, for real? But um, as a kid, as a teenager, that was cool to me so um yeah i was talked to this guy and he was already messing with a bunch of people in the school um and i said this i think i said this before but my school was a very small school you went to that school from fifth to twelfth grade um some kids were fortunate enough to either get like they were fortunate enough to be able to leave the school but pretty much if you were there you were there unless you got kicked out or unless your parents pulled you out basically and I tried to switch schools like my mother just wasn't with it <laughs> um and I loved my school two pieces my school was the wave um now it's not but you know um fix the mic um but yeah um you know I was really attracted to this guy but I didn't really say anything because I was the type of person that I liked guys I would write the little cute notes do you like me what you got with me type stuff but I was always I would always get rejected and um it wasn't that I wasn't ugly. I just was very underdeveloped as a teen. Um, I told you, I mentioned this before that my period came at nine and then it didn't come back till 13. So I have a very small frame. I was very boyish. I was very just much a stick. When I say a stick, you guys, when I look at pictures of myself from back then, I'm just like, Lord, thank you for being pregnant because being pregnant with my son helped me to gain weight. And I've always heard that. Um, but my mom was like that as well. She was very much a stick. And then she had four of us, and now she's very much, you know, voluptuous and stuff like that. So, you know, um, I have high hopes, you know, baby number two. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, you know, I was always cool with the guys in school. It wasn't anything crazy like that. But um, fast forwarding, um, this guy, I guess he found out that I liked him or whatever. And um, we would flirt in and out of school, in and out. But then found that we were both on the debate team and I was actually shocked that he was on the debate team because he wasn't he didn't look the type to be on debate but he was 
Um, and there was one particular time we had to go away. Um, we didn't go away, but I think we went to Brooklyn or my head. I'm, I'm going to assume it was Brooklyn because we always had to go to Brooklyn for something. Um, for a debate competition. And um, me and him had to partner up because there were just no other partners available. We had to partner up. So I think we're playing the affirmative team and the other team playing the negative. But our judge, for some reason, was taking so long and all the other debate competitions had started. So um, I had needed to go to the bathroom. And prior to this, um, this guy was always trying to do things with me. And I would kiss him. He would touch me, but um, it wasn't nothing going further than that, like penetration or anything like that. Um, but this one time we went, um, to Brooklyn for the debate team, I had to go to the bathroom, um, and, you know, I knew everyone else was in their room, so in the debates and stuff, you could hear them, so I had went to the bathroom, and, um, after I used it, I heard the door open, and there was something, and I know this was the Holy Spirit, um, warning me, but there was something in me saying, don't go out the bathroom, because I knew when I heard the door that it wasn't going to be a female, um, just because I knew everyone else was starting their debate, so I already had an inkling of who it was, and, um, when I opened the door to rush out, he pushed me back in the bathroom stall, and, um, raped me, basically, um, and, I don't know, it wasn't, I don't know how to explain, like, I didn't cry, but I didn't also want it to happen, but he continued to do it anyway, and it really hurt, like, a lot. A lot. Um, and it was very awkward. I was already in this kind of stage where I didn't fully understand sex, and then I had the situation that happened with a relative. And now I'm being put in a situation with a guy that I really, really like, and I really, really trusted. But he's doing something that I don't want. But I want to say no, but even if I scream, no one's going to hear me because everyone's in rooms locked away and the bathroom wasn't close to any of the classrooms. So it really put me in an awkward situation. So after he did what he did, we ended up going to have the debate. And I know someone's going to say, well, why you didn't say anything to anybody? Why you didn't talk to anybody? Again, I was already a quiet child, as I mentioned in my depression ch um, video. I was always a quiet child. My mom, when I was a baby, um, used to forget that she had me on her hip because I was so quiet. Um, and then going through the experiences that I went through, I kind of just continued to be quiet and continued to shut down. I'm trying so hard not to cry. Um, but, you know, I was put into that situation and um, I can't really blame anyone but myself for that. And um, obviously I can blame him as well. But, you know, I feel like it was the whole flirting situation that kind of brought all of that to the forefront of what he did and um you know even after the competition we sat we talked um and it bothered me but it was just like what can i do who can i go to i didn't want to tell my parents i didn't want to speak to um friends because friends everyone knew who he was and nobody really thought that he would want to do anything with me and if he did then it would be my fault basically like i said i went to a small school majority of the females liked him so it was just one of those situations where it's just like what do you do um, we continued to have a fling. I don't want to say relationship because it really wasn't, but we continued to have a fling and, um, it continued for a while. Um, one, because I was stupid and naive and I just didn't know what to do. And there was a point where, um, I did go to his house one day and he asked me to give him head and it did. Um, and it was very uncomfortable weird and uncomfortable for me because that was the first time that I've ever done that. I didn't really know what was going on. Um, it was very weird. And then he did something that kind of pissed me off. So I wanted to leave and I had left my keys. I was staying at my grandmother's at the time. Um, my family and I were living with my grandmother at the time and I left my keys at his house. And um, it was very strange because he threatened me not to tell anyone. Um, you know, he was in a gang at the time, so you can only imagine. Probably like 13, 14 at the time, and I'm being threatened by someone not to open up my mouth. Like, that's that's hard. Um, so, it, it was what it was. And after some time, we just stopped talking um, because I had a lot of anger towards him. And even when we did come to, like, cross paths at time, it wasn't good. Like, he knew how I felt. He knew my emotions. Um, 
so he tried to stay away sometimes he'll try to crack a joke but it was just like there was nothing really to joke about because a lot of things were starting to come to mind um so you know it's hard when you trust somebody and when you really like someone and you want to tell somebody but you really have no one to tell you can tell a parent but then you know what are they gonna say you can tell a friend but aren't they gonna blame you so i had a lot of things already dealing with what had happened with me when i was younger so add that on top so i was molested and right um and then let's fast forward I don't know which one happened first, so I'm going to talk about um, the gang rape situation. So, my brother, um, yeah, actually, no, this was definitely before I went away to college. So, yeah, this is going in the right direction um, because, oh, Jesus, where do I even begin? There's so much. A lot of these stories really intertwine, so it's kind of hard. But, um, anyways, senior year um, of high school. My brother and I, my family just was dealing with a lot because my dad had left. Um, he cheated on my mother, had another kid, and then he just dipped. Literally dipped on us. Like, it was just like, deuces, I'm out. And I still have a lot of anger towards my dad with that, and I'm going to talk about that in another video. Um, but, yeah, my brother was really into gangs heavy, heavily. Um, he was gang banging. He was doing things that he shouldn't do, smoking, drinking. And um, that was his way of coping. My way of coping was just being quiet. Just depression was my coping mechanism. So we dealt with it very differently. Um, but the way he dealt with it was a little extreme because it put my family and I in danger. And um, there was a time where I met a guy and, you know, everything was cool. We hung out, and when I mean hung out, we had sex. Um, I'm just gonna be open about it. I was a very, I'm a very sexual person. I was when I was a kid, um, obviously. But everything that happened and trying to understand things, I just felt like sex was normal after that. It was just like it was a normal thing for me. So um, we had sex or whatever, and then we hung out. We smoked weed, and then I wanted, to, I was ready to go home. I never forget this. I was ready to go home, but he kept walking me. Okay, and um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Co-op City, but I, this was all happened when I was living in New York and I lived uptown um, in the Co-op City area and Co-op City has like four sections or five sections I think it's four sections and then the fifth section is like on the one whole other side so we ended up going to section five um, and section five was a very dark dreary area um, like literally you can see the difference from the clouds it's very dark and shaded and gloomy spiritually you can see that it's a very dark place but um at that time like I said I just I didn't care I was looking to just hang out, have comfort, do whatever, you know. I didn't I didn't I didn't have any cares at that point. It was just like whatever. Um, but yeah, we went to section five and um we went into a hallway to smoke weed and he heard a police officer and he straight dipped on me, left me with the weed. Like when I say he dipped, you guys, he fucked and I had to literally blow it out, put it in my pocket and pretend like everything was normal and pray I didn't smell like weed and leave. Um, so I was by myself. So then he caught up with me outside, and I'm like, you know what? After that, I was just like, it's it's time for me to go home. I, I need to just leave. Um, but he wanted to walk me all the way. Now, mind you, there was a bus stop literally where we were coming out of. But he wanted to walk me all the way around. And every time we went past like a store or something, he would go inside, talk to people, and come out. And honestly, I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, I want to go home. I was in my own little la la land, already going back into the depressed age. Um, and I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't until I felt this inkling to turn around, um, and to, to be more aware of my surroundings. Um, and again, at the time, I wasn't really going to church faithfully. I was dealing with a lot. So I just, I was, to myself, I didn't really seek God or anything like that. So, you know, getting that nudge at the time, I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. But now that I know, I'm like, okay, the Holy Spirit was definitely with me through all the things that I was going through. I'm trying to get my attention. So I turned around and there was a guy on his bike. And normally when you're on your bike, you just keep bicycling, whether somebody looks at you, right? No, this guy had got off of his bike when I looked at him, looked at me and sat down. And I thought that was really strange because normally people just keep biking, right? So the Holy Spirit just kept saying look around your surroundings so i had saw a group of three guys walking like we were walking here me and the guy were walking here and there was a group of guys like further on the other side walking the same direction and 
I started to really think, and I'm like, okay, this is weird. And then we were walking towards a building, and um, the buildings are not like the projects, and like they're co-op, so it was very, I don't know how to explain the buildings, but there were a bunch of guys, like, right where we were walking, and we were a good few feet away, and I'm just like, okay, this isn't, like, in my head, I'm like, this isn't making sense. A guy gets off his bike when I look at him. Three guys are walking on the side of us, and there's a group of guys over heading, and I'm walking with this guy, but this is the same guy that dipped on me when he thought a police officer came in the building. Okay, nothing is making sense. And in that instant, the Holy Spirit told me to go home. So I'm like, okay. I told the guy, I said, I want to go home. Where's the bus stop? And he's like, oh, the bus stop is that way. The same direction we were walking with all of the guys. And again, it still didn't feel right. So what I did was funny, but it was the only thing that I could think of to get out of that situation. I immediately, when I say it was like I was an actor, you guys, I immediately broke down and cried um, and fell to the ground like my foot or my ankle was hurting. And this guy looked at me like I was crazy. He was like, well, come on, come on, we can go over here. I'm like, no, I need to go home. I need to go home. Because it, it just didn't feel right. It didn't settle with me. And, um, you know, I knew that the bus stop was that way. Because I saw a bus stop where, like, we walked past a few bus stops. But you're walking me in this direction. That doesn't make sense to me. I, it's one thing if I don't see any bus stops. But we literally walked past, like, three or four bus stops. So I walked away from him. And he was still trying to get my attention. So I had walked to this older lady. And I was asking her where the bus stop was, and she told me where the bus stop was. So I was walking as fast as I could, but limping to that bus stop to get home because it didn't feel right. And it wasn't until I got on the bus that the Holy Spirit literally was like, you were going to get gang raped. And um, I got home, I spoke to a few people, and I found out that the reason why I was going to get gang raped was because of my brother's affiliation with a gang. And um, by the grace of God, I didn't get gang raped because the Holy Spirit kind of like opened my eyes to my surroundings. But, um, you know, if I wasn't paying attention, I could have been gang raped and that probably, that alone probably would have broke me more than I ever could have been broken because there were a good amount of guys. There were more than 10 guys um, going in the same direction of us. So I could not imagine me coming out of that alive or sane. Um, honestly, so the Holy Spirit literally, like, God had my back on that one. Um, fast forward to college. I went to three different colleges, and I talked about this, I believe, in the depression video. Um, but this was my second college that I went to. I was talking to two guys, um, two different guys. One guy was one, like, the guy that I really was, like, messing with, but then the other guy was in a fraternity, and I wanted to be with him. But I also knew that it wasn't going to work being with him because he was in a fraternity. So I had another male friend. Like, I'm cool with guys. I have a lot of male friends. And it's not that we do anything. I'm just very comfortable around guys. And it sounds weird, but I'm pretty sure most females feel the same way. We feel more comfortable with guy friends versus female friends because females cause issues. Simple as that. Um, I literally can count the amount of female friends I have on one hand versus the amount of male friends I have. But, um... This one guy who I considered to be a friend, um, I'll never forget this day, I was studying in my room. Um, I think we was having midterms or preparing for midterms, something like that. Some type of test or something. I was doing paper, I don't remember. But I was in my room minding my own business and he came over um, and, you know, I was very cool. People could come to my room, especially because I had a room by myself. Um, literally a room to myself. It was, uh, I think one of my room, my roommate had either moved out or something like that or she left the school. I literally just had room to myself. So I had two twin beds that I had pushed together to make um, a full size. So I was studying one day and he came over and knocked on the door and I said, hey, cool, come, come in. I played on Jersey music at the time, you know, club, Jersey club music. And um, I think I was typing up a paper. I was on my computer. That's all I remember. Like I was on the computer and he started talking to me um, and he said he wanted to hang out. So I said, cool, because again, I hung out with a lot of males. It didn't bother me. We didn't do anything. I was only talking to two specific people, and one person was really like the guy that I, you could say I was messing with, but, um, you know, yeah, so for some reason he got a little bit too friendly and um, kind of pinned me to my bed and basically orally raped me. And I know that sounds weird, um, people don't necessarily say they get orally raped, but yes, um, he gave me 
oral sex without my permission and I kept saying no and I'll never forget it because the guy that I was actually messing with at, at the time like talking to for real for real at the time had came to my room door and was knocking on the door and I wanted to cry out for help but the guy had his hand over my mouth so I couldn't really say anything um so he had left and the guy had had finished doing what he was doing and um was literally getting ready to penetrate me and I broke down crying because I'm like yo you're not listening I don't want this and I guess he thought it was a game but it was just like if I'm telling you no I don't want that why would you do it you know so he finally felt bad and let go and left and it took me a minute to tell the guy that I was talking to what had happened and um we talked about it I told him what had happened about that day and he was really upset and pissed off um but come to find out that guy had did the same thing to some other girls on, in our dorm so yeah um that's that and um, I'm trying not to cry because it's 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 not that um, I still dwell on it but I do remember the situations that I was put in and they're not good situations they put me in a very dark space you know but um, again fast forward I'm no longer in school because my mother couldn't afford to pay for it herself it was a lot um, and I was at a family event and one of my relatives again <laughs> um, this is the second time I was molested um, you know as kids we were always playful as a kid i had this thing for kicking him in his shin don't ask me why and his shin was like on his leg if you don't go not if you guys don't know what i'm talking about the shin is part of the leg so i always had this thing as a kid where we would laugh giggle and he would do something to make me mad and i would kick him in his shin that was the thing that i did i don't know why i did it as a kid it just happened um but there came a point where um you know we're all grown up we were at my aunt's for christmas i believe because that's normally what we did for the holidays christmas and thanksgiving we would go to one of my aunt's house and like all have family you know family time i'll never forget we were in the room and um he was getting real flirty and it confused me because i'm like okay we're, we're dude what are you doing um and we were all, all my cousins we were all in the, the the room chilling and talking and whatnot but for some reason he thought it was cool to um whip his penis out and put my feet on his penis to give him a foot job and it was weird. It, it was the weirdest, weirdest thing ever. One, I've never put my foot on anybody's penis. Like, what? Um, and two, we're related. Like, we're relatives. We're cousins. Like, what are you doing? Um, and literally, all of my other family members were in the living room. Me and him were left in the room. And I was getting ready to leave. And he wanted to talk. And I'm thinking, cool, we can talk to the relatives. You know? But no, it went completely left. And... He literally flirted with me for a while. Um, text messages, Facebook messages. It came to a point where I had to show my mother because I was uncomfortable um, being around him, being in his presence. And even to this day when I'm around him, it's very awkward. I won't even say hi. Like normally I say hi to people. Even the, my relative that had molested me as a kid, I say hi to. I even give him hugs. But this one, I just... Because the way he looks at me makes me feel uncomfortable. And I feel like if we were put in a situation where we were alone in a room and no one was around, he probably would have raped me um, or probably could rape me. So, um, you know, I just I don't like being around certain relatives and I'm very cautious around people. Um, now, I'm telling you guys these because being molested twice and being raped twice was not easy. Um, and I'm not crying now as much as I want to cry. I'm not crying now because I've giving it to god it hurts does it still hurt yes is it hard at times yes um when i hear about other women who's been raped and molested it breaks my heart because it's it's not a fun thing and most people have someone to talk to but for me i didn't talk to anyone my mother didn't know any of this until probably two years ago i'm 27 i didn't tell her any of what was going on until two years ago and the only reason why my parents found out that i had sex prior to um was because i was put in a situation which i'm going to talk about that in my abortion video where i was with a guy and i got pregnant and they thought that he took my virginity and i had to tell them that he did not i was raped um prior to then so you know my mother and doesn't quite know a lot that has gone on in my life and it's not that i don't want to tell her i would love to tell her but i don't want her to overreact um when she did find out about that relative that was from her side of the family that did molest me as a kid she was pissed she was she was pissed off and i had to calm her down not to spaz on that person because i told her that person actually ended up um 
sending me an apology letter because this relative was put in a situation where he had to go away and he would write letters to me apologizing and I take it that he was apologizing for what happened when he did what he did when I was younger I don't know and I'm not even gonna dwell on it um, I just know that you know he apologized is it hard to be around certain family members yes um, is it hard for me to talk about what happened no oddly enough talking to strangers is not hard to talk to them about it but when it comes to people that know me it is hard to talk to them about it because a lot of people don't know um, or will believe what happened. Um, with my experiences, I turned into a very sexual being because I thought it was okay. And instead of going to the Word of God, I just continued to do what I was doing. Um, sex was normal to me. Every relationship that was I was in, pretty much I was having sex with the person. Um, it was something that was normal. I don't really know how else to explain it. You can hear in you know in church, oh. Having sex before marriage is bad. Your parents will tell you don't have sex. But when you've already been raped, when you've already been molested, and you haven't had the chance to talk to anybody, and when you don't really seek the word of God for yourself, you become very sexual. And we were already created to be sexual beings, but we were created to be sexual in a context of marriage. Um, outside of marriage, that can create a lot of troubles. And for me, it did. I was very sexual and i'm going to talk about the whole being sexual and my sexual sin testimony because i had a lot of soul ties and um soul ties is basically what happens when you have sex with someone when you're having sex with someone you're uniting your soul with their soul and you're now picking up with whatever demonic um energy they had they're picking up with whatever you had you're sharing souls and um it's it's a very serious thing it really is um and that also added to the whole depression thing because I was picking up all of these different things from different people and um, it wasn't going anywhere. So that's why it took me 23, 24 years to break out of depression. Um, and I'm saying 23, 24 years, like I've been depressed since I was a baby, but I'm going to say like 10 years. I know in the depression video I said 24, but um, it didn't really start until I was about 10-ish, 10-ish, 27, so I'm going to say 13 14 years um so yeah um that's pretty much it if you are a victim of rape if you have been a victim of rape if you've been a victim of molestation i could tell you to talk to someone i definitely could tell you that um it could probably help but i don't know because i didn't experience that i kept all those emotions to myself and even to this day when i'm dealing with something i don't talk to people and it's not a good thing to keep your emotions inside because it really takes a toll on you because you're not letting it go um if you have to pray pray if you have to write it out write it out but don't keep it to yourself some find someone that you can rely on i didn't have anyone at that time like i still feel like i don't have anyone besides god to talk to about certain situations because i don't feel like being judged i don't feel like being called a liar i have had people tell me i'm lying about situations and it's just like how why would i lie about that that's not something you lie about that's not something anyone should lie about being raped and molested is not a fun thing having been raped twice and then been molested twice by relatives that's not something i would take lightly period so um definitely if you've been through anything like that seek god and, and get help i didn't get help which is why i was struggling for years with depression because i didn't have anyone to talk to and i kept it inside and it's not a good thing to keep it inside it it doesn't help you um, it doesn't help your spiritual growth. It doesn't help you mentally or emotionally. Sorry about that. The camera cut off. But, um, yeah, you become closed off. And it's not a good thing to become closed off because then you're no longer content to be around people. You start to distrust people. And, um, I, thankfully, I wasn't the type of person that distrusted people after the situations. I just didn't like to be around people in general. Like, I could hang around you for a certain amount of time and then that's it like after that after that time limit came it was just like all right i want to go home because i'm more content being alone but even with being alone i was in my feelings i was in my emotions the enemy really was bringing to mind all the things that i've been through and was really messing with me and um it came to a point where i felt like i was worthless literally felt like it it didn't matter which is what prompted me to try and commit suicide and i'll talk about that in another video like Depression prompted me into so many things. Um, depression really was a gateway for me to get into sexual sin and also into depression and, um, you know, smoking weed and just doing things that weren't of God.
Um, and I can say I thank God now that I have the insight and the awareness that I do now. Um, I wish I had that awareness back then, but, you know, my experiences help other people. When I was in college, I was telling other females my situations and helping them when I could. And I really didn't realize I was giving my testimony and sharing my testimony and helping them understand their own personal experiences. I didn't understand it back then, you know, I was a college kid just looking to have fun. Now, when I share my experiences, I understand. I went through it, not for myself, but to help other people. And I know sometimes it sounds stupid to hear that because I used to hear that all the time. Oh, maybe you went through this for someone else's um, sake or you went through this to be able to testify. And at that time, I was just like, what the hell? God gonna put me through this for what? To testify to somebody else. But now I understand, um, you know. What I've gone through helps the body of Christ regardless, whether it be one person, two people, 15 people, the thousand of you that view this video, um, it helps. And I'm a living witness that you don't have to be broken from what you've gone through. It hurts. I know it hurts. It hurt me for a long time. I'm still struggling every now and then when I'm around certain relatives. I'm still struggling. Um, and it affects my relationship a little bit. Um, my fiance, I told him from day one what happened with me. Um, when we got together back in 2012, like the day we got together, I told him everything, um, which is crazy because my mother didn't even know a lot of that little stuff that was going on. But I told him everything the first two weeks that we were together. Um, he knows like he knew and he was able to understand um, me and it doesn't help, especially when you're looking to get into a serious relationship and get married. Um. Dealing with those things and having not gotten over them, I was very closed off with him. I was very much um, pushing him away. And it wasn't intentionally. It's just how I've come to be. I like to be by myself. I like to um, remain in this quietness that's not healthy from our relationship. And it has definitely ruined my relationship a bit. Um, thank God now I'm aware of it. I'm We're getting a lot better but um you know you definitely want to deal with those situations especially before marriage because i don't want to go into my marriage broken and hurt um my first lady and my bishop have an inkling that i've been through things um they don't know specifically what it is that i've been through but they know that my testimony is very powerful and they know that i have a lot to share with people um you know, it's it's hard. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. Um, and again, some of you guys might be like, why isn't she crying? Because I'm I'm okay. Um, I have God on my side. God has been helping me quite often with the situations. Um, and there are times when the enemy will remind me of what happened in my past. Like, literally, at night is when he tends to come at my mind a lot more. And it hurts. It breaks me down. But I've learned that um, I can either cry and sulk or I can give it to God and let God help me. Um, and doing it the way I was doing before didn't help me like at all. It, it didn't do anything. But um, letting God take the will and help me heal is the best way that I found to get over it. And, um, you know. I don't really know what else to say. Um, you know, just be mindful of who you're with. Be mindful of what guys you hang around. Be mindful of the friends that you have, male friends. Even be mindful around your relatives. Um, because you never really know who or what will take place. Um, even now when I'm around certain people, I have to be mindful. Um, make sure I'm not alone with a certain person or make sure I don't say the wrong thing to give them the wrong idea. And um, I'm not saying that it's my fault. Like, nothing, I don't believe any of it was my fault. Honestly, I don't. Um, but I also need to be aware that I could have somehow prevented it or talked about it to help myself in a way when I didn't. So, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. These are, like, very awkward videos to make um, because I always kept what has happened to me to myself. Um, my mother doesn't know quite a lot of it still. 
So she may come across these videos and watch them, and she may come talk to me. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I do find that I read a lot of scripture to keep myself focused. I have gotten a lot of books about um, dealing with sexual sin and stuff like that to really understand and really um, just open up my mind, period, to the Holy Spirit and God and all that he has to teach me about it. Um, with sharing these testimonies, my goal is to help someone out there even if it's just one person or two people or all thousand of you i want to help someone in some way with my testimony um my testimonies are different because again i didn't lose my mind um i pretty much just shut down completely and shutting down has become a mechanism that i use um even in my relationship with my fiance it says something that hurts my feelings um, I won't discuss it with him. I'll shut down and be quiet to myself and send like one word responses or I really won't talk. And it's not good. It's not helpful. Um, but I'm learning and that's him calling me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I'm going to end this video here. I'm going to answer the phone because he's calling me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.